When you hear the name Arctic Monkeys, you probably either think of jailbacked hair and leather jackets, dored by the Tumblr girls, or you think of chavvy looking lads from Sheffield. When Arctic Monkeys burst onto the indie scene in the UK in 2005, there were tons of indie bands. However, with Arctic Monkeys, no one had seen quite an impact like they made other than Oasis previous to them. They actually beat Oasis's record for the amount of debut albums sold in the first week. Their use of more raw and literal lyrics in their songwriting, as well as their incredibly catchy riffs and their thick Yorkshire accents, grabbed the attention of the UK instantly. Their first two albums are still probably some of the best indie albums to come out of the UK and some of my personal favourites. But how exactly did Arts Monkeys get their sound on their first album? Indie rock borderlining on punk in places. Today we're going to look at the exact pieces the gear that they use to get these iconic tones. Alex and Jamie in the early days had really simple setups. Alex used two strats, a Mexican black strat and an American made white strat. Jamie also used a Fender around this time, but this time it was a red Telecaster custom style guitar. Pedal wise, it was really simple. All they used was a Proco Rap 2 style distortion. But one thing that always eluded me was that clean tone that they get. But it's quite thin, jangly, but super dynamic in places. Almost as if they were plugging straight into the desk. And that's exactly where the Orange AD30 comes in. Alex used this amp exclusively throughout the first album. And I think Jamie might have used it to record too. Although he's been seen to be using high watts live around this time. I've got an Orange AD30 head here right now. And a Proco Rat 2 style distortion. So let's see exactly how close we can get to these iconic tones. So first up, some of the more bright, jangly, clean tone songs. So in my opinion, I've never actually got closer to that tone than with this amp, but it makes a lot of sense because it's the exact amp that they use on this recording. For the slightly overdriven lead tone, I used the Proco Rap 2 distortion, but I just pulled down the gain a bit, so it's more like an overdrive tone. It makes a lot of sense that it sounds right. I mean, we've got all the ingredients, we've got a strap on the bridge pickup, we've got the Orange AD30 head and the Proco Rat 2 style distortion. So now let's look at another song using that iconic clean jangly tone, but then transitioning into a much heavier distorted tone via the Proco Rat 2.
as you can see, the rat into the orange amp really nails the early Arctic Monkeys tone. And it's really the secret to this sound is the amp. Last but not least, let's look at the one song that actually made Arctic Monkeys burst onto the scene in 2005. We're Arctic Monkeys, this is I Bet You Look Good on the Dance Floor. Don't believe the art. <clears throat> So as you can see, the Orange Amp really nails these tones. It's quite amazing after all these years of playing these songs, listening to these songs, and kind of trying to get these sounds, that all along, you should have just used the amp that they were using. The Orange AD30 is quite unique in that sense. It really does have that kind of thin, but kind of dynamic and tiny bit of breakup to the lead sound. It's not really anemic sounding. It actually sounds quite rich in places, even though it is so thin. It has some nice harmonic texture going on there. Now it's time to depart the first album and look at some of the times in the second album. Alex and Jamie's gear progressed a lot with this, and it makes sense because the sound on this album actually progressed a lot as well. So Jamie was playing a 335 with the Bigsby, and Alex was using a Fender Bronco, which was kind of like Fender's student model at the time. And for me, you can get really close with the bridge pickup on the strap. Alex also switched the amps he was using in. Around this time, he started using the Selma Zodiac, which to me actually sounds very similar to the Orange AD30, so we're going to continue using that. And Jamie was still using high watt amps as he was on the first album, but their pedal boards changed significantly for this as well. A lot of the spacey sounds that Jamie incorporates comes from a Deluxe Memory Man and a Hughes and Kettner Rotosphere for modulation but he also used a tremolo pedal called the Pulsar from the HX around this time too. Alex added a Tube Screamer to his board around this time, but also kept the Proco Rat 2 on the boards, and he also had a right sphere, just like Jamie, and pretty much everywhere we hear modulation on this album is that exact unit. My favourite use of this is in the next song. Like I said before, the Orange AD30 really does sound similar to the recorded sound that we hear Alex use on the second album. Even though he's using a Selma Zodiac Twin, I think you can get away with just using this amp because again, the Selma has that bright, jangly clean tone. Jamie's parts on this song were just clean into the amp, I had the tube screamer to give us a little bit of drive through the main riff, as well as a subtle tremolo sound. And then when we get to the more lead lines where it's heavily modulated, again, that's the Hughes and Kettner Rotosphere. Now we go back to the classic heavy distorted single chord tone for a song that wouldn't seem out of place on the first album.
this song, it just sounded like they were using the amp clean or maybe boosting it with a true scream a little bit. And all the distorted tones from both guitars were coming from the Proco Rat too. Jamie also made use of his tremolo pedal around this time and you can hear it on some of the little lead lines as well. There's two more songs that really make good use of the writer's sphere as well. One would be If You Were There Beware and my favourite track off the album 505 where Alex is sat playing keys while Jamie and Miles Kane actually take guitar duties. So there we have it, that was a look at the early Arts Monkey sounds. Again, you've got to have that really bright, jangly, clean tone. For the first album, Alex was using the AD30, which we used throughout this whole video, and then depart into the Selma Zodiac Twin. Again, the Selma, to me, recorded, sounds very similar to the AD30. So if you want that early Arts Monkey sound, and even into some of the more later albums, because he still used the Selma, the AD30 would be a really good bet. Of course, the guitars make a big difference. For Alex's parts, all the way up to the Jazzmaster era, you could just use a strap and a bridge pickup. And for Jamie's parts, you would just need a Telecaster and a Goofy 5. The main pedals you want, Proco Rat 2 style distortion, because that can just be used throughout the whole album. Tube screaming for a little bit of boost, like Alex used on the second album. But then a couple of modules modulation pedals and delay for spacey sounds. The Deluxe Memory Man, the Houston Ketna Rotor Sphere, and a good tremolo pedal by the Electro Harmonics Pulsar that Jamie used. So what do you think of the early Arts Monkeys albums? For me, they're one of the main reasons I actually got into playing guitar, and it's always really fun to revisit these songs. I'm still quite amazed how good the Orange AD30 is for these times. If you really want to nail these, I would get that amp and a couple of those pedals. So that's the first two albums looked at. Maybe in the next video, we'll look at some of the later albums. If you did like the video, please leave a like, comment and subscribe, and hit the little bell notification for me as well. It really does help me out a lot, and that way you won't miss out in my future uploads. Let me know down in the comments below what your favorite Arts and Monkeys album is. And you can also click on one of these videos and check out another video of mine. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.